Well, last time we were talking about the marketing channels. We finished talking about the Japanese one. Uh, we have new uh, channel structures. Uh, do you know Walmart? Yes. Costco. They're kind of hyper markets, so it's easier for companies if they can get their product to be sold in Walmart or Costco. It means it can be sold all over the world. They just have to deal with the one hypermarket. It's kind of a US system. Uh, we have e commerce. We'll do some case study about e commerce. Okay? It's getting more popular. We talked about Alibaba, Coinvest. They work with delivery companies like UPS. You know UPS? Major delivery company. So you order online. The delivery company handles the customs, the tax, brokerage, the paperwork, those kind of things. They provide that service. Uh, the future oil supplies may have a, a further impact on uh, the channels because currently we have some large channel in the middle or warehouse. Do you understand warehouse? Yes. So we have a large warehouse and then we have a lot of vans which travel large distances all over the country. Okay? But like UPS or that kind of thing. Right? But in the future, because of the oil price go up or the oil supplies change, we could have different structure where we have smaller warehouses near the local towns which have more stock of goods so that it's not traveling as far from the central warehouse. This can be a new, newer trend. So, Anyway, at the moment the oil price is still uh, close or low. So, uh, in Italy, we have one store for every 63 people. In the US, we have one store for 322. So, Italy a little bit similar to Japan. They have a lot of small, small kind of grocery stores. So, their stores are small and specialized. If you think about fashion, in Italy, they are going to have more specialized boutique. Do you prefer to shop in a specialized boutique or a large uh, fashion store? Large fashion store, why? Lower price, you can have wider range, check quickly. Does anybody prefer to shop in a small boutique? You mean that it is cheap. You, but if it's a good value one, right? In Italy, they like that. They like they think the small store person uh, pays more attention to the goods, to the detail of the clothes, to the quality, so on. They have a lot of different fashion, so they're more interested in fashion. So the question is, how can you reach the small retailers? You want to sell clothes in Italy. They have a lot of small retailers, not big ones. Okay? How are you going to discuss with your partner? What are you going to do to reach the small retailers? Countries like Japan or Italy. Do you understand the question? Could be you want to sell clothes or you want to sell pepero or you want to sell toys. You said in Norway they have just one big Kiwi is a big retailer. Yeah. Has a lot of stores, big stores all over the country. Not necessarily big, but not like in the US. Mm -hmm. Not like in the country. It's not like Okay. So, anyway, that's all over the country. So, what are you going to do in Italy if you want to sell your product in Italy? For example, clothes or something else. So, discuss with your partner. <coughs> How can you reach all of these small retailers?
Okay, does anyone have any suggestion? Yes? Uh, there, there might be a union of some smaller retailers. So yes. I would contact that union. Okay, like the Chamber of Commerce is often called yeah. for a town. What are you going to say to them? They want to sell some clothes to some fashion students. So, would you please provide me this list of them? No, first I'm negotiate or something. Okay, so get to try to join. Sometimes they'll ask for membership later. They say, yes, you can have the list, but you should join our chamber of commerce. Are you going to pay a membership fee? Do you want to do that? Well, then they might say no. Can't have the list. Unless you're in there. Huh? We will negotiate. Okay. So, go to try to work through the Chamber of Commerce or local associations. Anything else? We mentioned in the business to business part. Important part of marketing for business to business. What was that? The end. What's an important part of marketing for business to business, especially in Europe? Trade shows. Okay, so you could go along to some trade show for retailers, something like that. Any other suggestions? Here. E-commerce show platform. E-commerce show platform. E-commerce show platform. I mean online. Try to reach them online. How are you going to do that? Uh, the retailers may have the, the small shops online and uh, I can use uh, to have some uh, advertisement on the platform. So you're going to contact them yeah. online? Yeah. Any other suggestion? Uh, maybe some public tender. What do you mean? Uh, I hope it's called tender in English. Uh, the, when they when they make a tender and want to find a retailer of this type of post. Mm, public tender is more for you're doing a job and you want to in, invite, usually it's used for construction companies. Yeah, yeah that's that true. kind of thing. But maybe sometimes, let's say, they want some uniforms, thousands of thousands of people. Okay, so maybe the, the government. Yeah, let's maybe see. talk about the company. Okay. So it's not an easy question, we can just go around, we can go to Italy and go around with our product and show it to all of the stores, try to get them to accept it. Okay, so emerging economies also have small stores and also small inventory. When I was in Ecuador I talked with the uh, Chief Marketing Officer of British American Tobacco in Ecuador. He told me that they sell just one cigarette, they don't sell a packet of cigarettes in Ecuador. Why do you think they sell just one cigarette instead of the packet of 20? It's cheaper. It's cheaper, right? People can't afford to pay for 20 cigarettes in one go. But they might have enough money to pay for one cigarette. So 20 cigarettes, two or three dollars. One cigarette is 20 cents. They have 20 cents, they just buy a cigarette. Okay? So in emerging economies, we can have small, in break up our products. Okay? Make smaller inventory. Think about the price, what's reasonable for the people. Uh, they usually also have small stores in the countryside. They don't have these big chains. Walmart might be in the emerging economy. Okay, so we have to find different ways to reach the uh, customers. Another pattern is direct marketing. So companies can send a catalogs and uh, so on. So we have to decide about our middlemen. We must try, when we are deciding about how to choose a middleman, we have to think about two sets of channels, our home country and the foreign market country. So we can either have agent middlemen or merchant middlemen. So agent middlemen represent the principal, but you guys are going to be merchant middlemen in this case, right? 
you are going to buy the goods from Lotte, is that correct? Uh, yes, yes. So you take the title to the goods, means you buy them. Merchant is buying and selling, right? Agent, just representing. So you're going to buy the goods and buy and sell on your own account to make a profit. Okay? Do you have a lot of brand, brand loyalty to Pepperell? I'm sorry? Do you have a lot of brand loyalty to Pepperell? If you find another product that you can sell more easily in Norway, are you going to use that or are you going to be loyal to Pepperell? Loyal. loyal to Pepperell. Why? Uh, because... You can make more profit selling the other product. Yeah, but we found this, we tried this, and we are satisfied with the quality of this product. Can we still can sell to different products? Are you forward looking or backward looking? You can make more profit with another product. Then we can. We can Pepper is not working well in Norway, but there's a new biscuit from Japan that's okay, working very well. We are losing money on this, then there is no point. Yeah, yeah, but who said we are losing money? I did. <laughs> no. Ah. For example, are you going to stay with Pepper? I, I actually. Or change? Personally, I think if we uh, lose money with Pepper, then we wouldn't change to, let's say, Poppy. Then it that it should be another product. Yeah, would you change to another product? Yeah. yeah okay. So then you don't have much brand loyalty, right? But if Pepero are going there by themselves or with an agent, they're going to say, oh, this is just a hard time for one year or two years. So we have a long-term strategy for 10 or 15 years. Are you going to wait for 10 years to make a profit? No. We can't afford it because... No, right? So the merchant middlemen don't have much loyalty. Okay. They, they have... <coughs> The advantage for Pepero, they have less credit risk and less stress. They just sell you the Pepero, forget about it. Okay? So Pepero's advantage for middlemen, they don't have much control, but they're not taking any risk. They're not taking the risk of going to Norway. You are. Okay? So they have less stress. So we have, we're thinking about limited control. In which case does Pepero have more control? The agent or the merchant? The agent, right? Against minimal financial and management commitment. In which case does, does Pepero have lower minimal financial and management commitment? Where did it, does Pepero have to spend less money and use less staff? Agent or merchant? Yeah. Merchant. Merchant, right? So they have to think about which is more important to them. Do they want control of their product? So that if things are going badly, you're not going to just take it away, right? It's going to stay there. Or is it more important that they have low cost, low, and they don't have to send much staff? If you, if you are, we can talk about generally small companies and big companies. What do you think? Are small companies more worried about saving the money and the staff, or controlling? Which is a small, small company more worried about usually? Financial. Finance. So what's a small company going to do? Agent or merchant? If you're a small company, what kind of middleman is better? Agent or merchant? You're more worried about finance. You don't want to spend a lot of money now because you don't have much money. Merchant. Merchant is better, right? If you're a big company, you have money to spare. What one might be better? You're worried about your reputation. Agent. Agent, okay, because you're selling Pepero in, in uh, Norway, of course Pepero has to give you permission to do that. You're representing them, so if you do just some bad behavior or strange behavior, they can also lose their reputation. So they will have to check out about you before they uh, give you permission to do that, right? So here we have... <coughs> the International Channel of Distribution, Alternatives. So we have, here is our home country and here is our foreign con consumer. So we have to get the product to the foreign consumer. So here we have domestic producer, okay? Then we can, here we can distribute with the domestic middlemen. We can use the export company, we're going to talk about in a minute, exporter. Then it goes on to the importer. We can have an agent here or merchant wholesaler gets to the foreign retailer. So let's talk about the different uh, types of middlemen. First one is global retailers. 
So global retailers is quite easy. Just we produce our goods, just we sell to global retailer, and we're here already. We get from this step to this step very quickly. Do you like, do you like global retailers? Do you want to sell your product in a global retailer? Yes. Is that easy? You no. make the product and then sell to Walmart, and there no. you are. No. Huh? No. Why not? The product might be awesome. Again, you mean it's hard to get your product accepted by Walmart? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But if you can, it's going to be. But it depends on personal product. I would say better, they would accept it easier. Do you think Walmart would accept Pepero? Yes. They would? Yes. Do you think Latte tried to sell it through Walmart? Actually, I don't think Latte would try to sell to Walmart. Walmart came to Korea, but it wasn't successful in Korea. So mm -hmm. at that time, Latte and Walmart were competitors. Who knows? Sometimes they make agreements, right? Apple and Samsung made agreements about different things. Next one is an export management company. We'll talk about it here. What do export management companies do? Usually small companies, we said small companies are more worried about, they don't want to spend much time or resources. So they might use an export management company. This company will research the foreign markets, like you're doing. They will find the best way to distribute and find distributors in the foreign country like you're doing, right? They will go to the trade show and exhibit your product. Are you going to go to any trade show? No. no. They will do all of these things. Advertising, they will make credit, they know the foreign language, they'll advise you, right? So now you guys can do work for this company after doing your project, right? You could do this for a company. Do you want to work for an export management company? Hmm? No? Do all of those things for your job? Does anybody want to work for an export management company? No takers? Okay. So they're going to do all of this uh, marketing plan for the foreign country and organize everything. But we have to pay them money. There's a cost. Okay. Uh, next one we have is uh, trading companies. Trading companies is an uh, old way that's dying out. Uh, if we think about Japan, Japan used trading companies a lot, a hundred years ago. So what would happen is that the Japanese, or the British also used a trading company. So just a Japanese trading company would set up in Shanghai, and they would sell all Japanese products from rice to a uh, hundred years ago, what were they selling? Maybe cotton, clothes, okay? jars, jugs. Okay, some horses, engine when the car started, car engines, oil. So the trading company is selling everything. So you would just contact the trading company and ask them, please sell my product in, in Shanghai if you were in Japan. We had the British India Trading Company. Have you heard of that company? It was a massive corporation which uh, existed in India two or three hundred years ago. It had its own army, massive army. It went to war with India. Uh, at the time, the company went to war with India. But that was a trading company. So you wanted to sell your product in India or buy a product from India, you just contacted the trading company. They organized everything. Okay. Next one is uh, complementary marketers. Uh, for example, Gillette. Gillette helps uh, Duracell. Do you know Duracell? Yes. So Gillette was selling in Africa. But Selling in Africa, again, Gillette were probably just selling single razors, right? Disposable ones. And Duracell the same, they want to sell just one or two batteries every time, not ten batteries. Okay? So they made an agreement with Gillette and they, they got a piggyback from Gillette, which means Gillette sold the batteries for Duracell. Right? Do you understand? It's like Gillette agreed to let Duracell use their distribution way. So the products move together at the same time. Do you understand piggybacks? Yes. Do you like piggybacks? Yes. Does your father give you a piggyback? Hmm? No? Take somebody on your back. So one company helps another company. In this case, both of these companies are American companies. Maybe the CEOs met each other. They made an agreement. Okay? I'll pay you some money 
you distribute white particles. Uh, export agent, we just looked at agents. So you contact an agent in a country like Spain or Italy, and you ask the agent to do everything, right? To find you new customers, to find how to distribute the product. So agent just acts on your behalf. What's the problem with an agent? You find just one agent. What's, what could be the problem? It's not easy to control the agent. Yes. What exactly is he or she doing? Yeah, they're quite, usually they're quite small, just themselves or a small office. Right? They could decide suddenly not to work with you anymore. They could retire. Okay, they could leave, quit their job. Uh, they might not be a good agent. They might not work hard. Hard to find. Expert associations. So companies join together to make an association for exporting. In this case, you can improve your trade terms. So all the car companies get together and they make an association. Then they lobby the government to change the law, change the taxes, that kind of thing. Uh, government middlemen. So uh, government is a big business. We didn't talk about that yet, especially in China. State-owned companies are a lot, right? What about in Russia? Is government big business in Russia? You're not sure. Selling things to the government? Anyway, the New Zealand, the Netherlands government has 10,000 different suppliers. He mentioned school uniforms or uniforms for the army. Right? In Korea, the military must take up a lot of money. Right? If you want to supply the military with uniforms or food or anything. Okay? So we can find some middlemen who can help us to sell to the government. Okay? Then that can help us. So, when we are selecting the middlemen, we need to look at these things. We need to say, what's our target market? We need to say, what is our goal? Do we want to make a big profit, or do we want to get just market share? Do we want to sell a lot of products? Specify financial and personnel commitments. Do we want to use a lot of staff? Do we want to use a lot of money now or later? And how much control do we want of the channel? Is our reputation very important to us? Okay. Do we want? Are we sure we want to stay in this market for a long time? Then probably we want more control. So we think about those things when we're selecting which of, which of these middle men we want to have. Here are the six C's of choosing middle men. The first one is cost. Cost is important to the company. How much does it cost for the middleman? Can you eliminate, do you think you can eliminate the cost of the middleman? Or save money by not having a middleman? What tasks does the middleman do? We discussed about an export management company or agent. What kind of tasks? Tell me some tasks that we saw that the export management company does. They go around the city and just find the stores or something they they work for, they try to find. Yeah. Try to find new uh, retailers yeah, to sell to. Okay, I mean, what other tasks do they do? What tasks are you doing for your project? Research. They do research of the market, right? What other things they do? Some administration, of course. Let's look back at the export management company to review what they do. Research. You said find the best way of distributing. They go to trade shows. They do all the handling, shipping, customs, insurance, prepare advertising, make credit. Do you understand credit? So they give the credit to the customer, not you. Okay, the customer, they pay you immediately. You get your money immediately, and then the customer pays them six months later. So they grant finance or credit. Okay? Advice on all those things. So if we just cut out the middleman, can we save money? Or do we still need to spend the money anyway? Yeah, sure. Which? We need to pay the middleman. Yeah, well, I mean, if we, if we stop, if we cut out the middleman, are we saving money? No. No? Okay. Yeah. Do we still need to do these things? Even if we don't have a middleman, do we have to do these things ourselves? Yes. 
Yes, right? So we have to think about the cost of the middleman. Is it going to cost us a lot to do these things? How much is the middleman charging? Are they charging too much? Okay? For doing those things. So there's going to be a cost anyway, but we have to figure out is it worth the cost to pay the middleman to do all those things? We need to think about capital requirements. How much, if we go by ourselves, how much money do we need to spend to go by ourselves? Do we have that money now? Right? It's going to be more expensive to start up by ourselves. We need to think about control, we talked about before. Coverage, how much of the country do we want to cover? Maybe we only want to sell in China, just in Shanghai, or Shanghai and Beijing. So perhaps the middleman is not appropriate for us. Okay? We're looking at just a certain part of the country. We have to look at the character, uh, different types of middlemen, and continuity. Uh, for example, the agent may retire. Is this, is this going to be uh, long? Do we want to be in the country for a long term or not? Are we just in for short profit? So if we think about those things, we can decide then the best way. Which one do you like from here? Just generally. Depends on every company, but which one do you like most from here? Trading companies. Trading companies. Just sell your goods to the trading company, don't forget about it. Like merchant middleman. Anybody else? What do you like? Hmm? Global retailer. You can find that. Is there any global retailer in Russia? Yes, we have. I do know Ashan, French, like home, French. What do they sell? They sell everything. Ashan? Or that IKEA? Do you have IKEA in, in Russia? Yes. Can you tell me, anybody else tell me any other global retailers that you know? So if I, if I sell my product to IKEA, then can be sold globally in their store? Yeah. Can you think of any other global retailers? H&M, Carrefour, Zara, H &M. Spar. Spar. Hmm? Mangos. Starbucks. Starbucks, my Okay, so uh, <clears throat> then we have to think about managing the channel. So we have to locate the middlemen. How can we locate the middlemen? Usually, our Department of Commerce helps us. Government has. Uh, do you have? Do you know Cotra? Yes. What does Cotra stand for? What does Cotra mean? Uh, trade association. It's like trade association. What do they do? Export. Export our association. What's the job? What's the mission of Cotra? Okay. They provide to trade. Does Cotra have a product to trade with other countries? No. So what's their mission? They provide information about Korean trade and. Uh, about different areas of the trade and taxes and things like that. To who? Uh, to exporters or to companies who would like to export to Korea. Okay, so they're going to do two things, right? They're going to help the Korean exporters. Their mission is going to be to help Korean exporters to increase their exports. And also to, help to assist the importers going to Korea, right? So you can ask them for help. Some of these, in France, the French government has a program where they provide insurance for companies. So you want to start this business in France, you explain this to the French government. The French government association, they can give you some insurance, but you should be exporting the product from France, not Korea. So you might be able to find, the Cotra might have the same program. It means that even if you fail, they provide insurance program, so you get your money back. Do you like that idea? Yes. Do you think that will help people to export things from France to other countries? 
they can take the chance and do it and then they can buy some insurance program that they can pay some insurance premium and if they fail they can get their money back right? that can help to promote the exports but they also do other things like helping you to find the middleman right so you should if you're doing that you can use the government agency government wants to promote the exports so they want to help you then when we're selecting the middlemen, we have to screen them. Just like when we're hiring somebody, we have to screen them, look at their background, because they're representing our company. So I'm saying, if Latte are going to allow you to sell their product, they're going to have to screen you. Right? It means, like, do you have experience in this area? Right? Are you a reputable, do you understand, reputable person? Are you a reputable person? I, can, I shouldn't ask if you have a criminal record, so I won't ask. They'll, I will presume you don't have any criminal record, right? Yeah. Maybe you would have had a problem getting a visa for Korea if you had. But, uh, you know, they check that kind of thing, that screening. Okay? Are they going to affect the reputation of our company? Then uh, we make, the agreement has to be very clear, because you can get some dishonest people. Okay? So you need to make the contract properly, and the agreement is very clear about everything, right? About the price, the number of goods they will sell in a year, about the advertising, how much advertising they're going to do for your company. Because some agents are not as motivated as other agents, so we need to clearly spell out in the agreement what they should do and what they shouldn't do on everything. How can we motivate people in general? That is a hard question, right? How, do you, how can we motivate people? What do you think? Discuss with your partner. How can we motivate the agent to work well for us? Or just generally, how can we motivate people in life? If you're a manager, how do you motivate the people? Discuss with your partner. <laughs> Give a bonus, so making the agreement, yes, bonus if they sell so many products, right? Anything else? Any other way? Bribery. What's bribery? What do you mean? Some. Give them some money to treat your product specially compared to the other products. Not bribery, just a gift. Just a gift. So just giving them some gifts, birthday present, take them to sports events, giving them giving gifts, cards, that kind of thing, you think. That can help to motivate people, yes, right? Even though it's a small thing like a card, to say thank you, send a thank you card, it can help to motivate them to work harder. Another way is we can give them publicity. We can invite them to our head office in our country, take photos with them, make an article in our company, Newspaper, so and so did a great job of selling our product in Spain. Right? Giving publicity is another way. Uh, so, hopefully, this is the point. At the start, when we're selecting the middleman, we need to select somebody who's self motivated. Okay? It's going to do a good job. Then we need to make sure we motivate them properly. If they're not doing a good job, we have to terminate. Uh, the real life is is not that easy. For example, one time when I was working, I had some I was working in the manager of a summer center during the holidays, and one of the teachers was uh, shouting and swearing at the students. But I should have fired him, right? Well I was too nice, I didn't want to fire the guy. But my boss came from the headquarters and she told me, why didn't you fire him? And then she fired him. Why? Right? Because sometimes if people are not doing the job properly, 
are doing the thing that they shouldn't be doing, like swearing at students, right? Then we just have to uh, terminate the contract, okay? Or find somebody else to do the job instead. So we can't be too nice in those cases, right? So my boss wasn't very happy with me if I was too nice to the guy, then it wasn't good overall, right? So then uh, we have to find a way of controlling them. You, you suggested using some kind of incentive, right? What are you going to do if they're not doing the job properly? Fire them. <laughs> Fire them immediately? Yeah. No. Maybe uh, decrease their salary, some punishment. First of all, find some other way to try and motivate them, right? To sell your product, because they might tell you, it's not me, just your product is not selling, right? So you have to try and figure out what the problem is and uh, find a suitable way to control them. So let's take a break now. <coughs> <laughs>